It has been quite a day as mobs of protesters stormed the Capitol this afternoon in an attempt to disrupt American democracy. But tonight, lawmakers are closer to certifying the presidential election. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. Washington, D.C. Fire Department says at least seven people were transported to local hospitals with injuries and police say one female shooting victim has died. But after the Capitol was declared safe, lawmakers got back to work with several, including Montana's Steve Daines, changing course and deciding not to oppose certification. Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with more. The objection is not sustained. The Senate has voted down a challenge to Arizona's electoral votes. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are lawfully elected and will become the president and the vice president of the United States on January the 20th. Earlier, rioters stormed the building, breaking through doors and busting windows. Capitol Police drew their weapons at one barricaded door from inside the house, though eventually protesters breached both chambers. This mob was in good part President Trump's doing. President Trump posted a video that has since been removed from Facebook and Twitter urging calm. You have to go home now. Hours earlier, he addressed a gathering near the White House. We will never give up. We will never concede. President-elect Joe Biden also addressed the chaos here, calling it an assault on democracy and an insurrection. Today's reminder, a painful one, that democracy is fragile and to preserve it, requires people of goodwill, leaders of the courage to stand up. In response to the day's chaos, several Democratic lawmakers are now calling for President Trump to be removed from office. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The House and Senate is expected to return to a joint session to continue the counting of Electoral College votes after the House members finish voting. Well, as protesters broke into the Capitol today, Montana Senator John Tester was in his D.C. office nearby. He was preparing remarks for the upcoming debate on objections to the presidential vote when the Capitol was breached by protesters. What we witnessed today uh, is, is, is stunning and it's very, very sad. Uh, it makes us weaker domestically as a country. And in the eyes of our foreign adversaries, it is absolutely uh, just cheapens this country like crazy. Tester, a Democrat, voting to certify the Electoral College votes that gave Democrat Joe Biden the presidency and had harsh words for those who promote the false notion that the election was marred by fraud. Those are my colleagues who invited this chaos, on, chaos onto our country. Uh, I would just say uh, you have inflicted grave harm on democracy for your own political gain. And, and the fact is they've enabled violence to enter the front doors of our United States Capitol. Republican Senator Steve Daines, who was one of the 11 senators prepared to object to the Electoral College results today, reversed course on that action around 6 o'clock tonight. He spoke with MTN's David Jay just moments ago about what led to that decision. We wanted to make sure that we were highlighting some of these irregularities and that we need more time to fully investigate what we saw happen in this election. But today, as the United States Senator, I want to do what's right for my country. We, we had our objection. We had our arguments made today on the floor of the United States Senate. But now, as we move through this process this evening, this election will be certified. Joe Biden will be elected the President of the United States. Well, the newest member of Montana's congressional delegation, Republican Representative Matt Rosendale, also responded tonight to the storming of the Capitol. He said he condemned political violence of any kind and said today was an absolutely terrible day. But unlike Danes, he did not back down from objecting to the vote. Rosendale said, quote, however, I will not be intimidated by mob violence from the left or right. I will oppose certification of electors from certain disputed states. These votes today were always about preserving and protecting the integrity of our election process, not any candidate. I will continue to work to ensure our elections are free and secure and every legal vote is counted and every fraudulent vote is rejected. Wyoming Senators Barrasso and Lummis also sent out statements condemning the protest. Congresswoman and House Republican Conference Chair Liz Cheney told NBC News today we have deep political differences, but we don't resolve those by mob violence. 
The president's statement was completely inadequate. What he has done and what he has caused here is something that we've never seen before in our history. Over at Montana State Capitol in Helena, protesters gathered peacefully outside to show their support for President Trump. Some singing and chanting and passing drivers, even honking their horns to show support. Even though officials, including some inside the Trump administration, have disputed claims of widespread voter fraud, demonstrators tell us they feel like their voices have not been heard and that they don't believe the results of the presidential election are legitimate. This is how Trump supporters are. We don't go through and break buildings. We don't go uh, burning buildings down. We don't go and hurt people, hurt their property. We're not like that. That's not how Trump wanted us to be. We are not going to go trash storefronts or hurt Americans, but we are going to take our country back. And if that's our last avenue to do, but if they follow our Constitution the way it's written, it, we shouldn't have to do anything. Came out today to support our president. Uh, I feel like the election was robbed from him. He has fought for us for the last four years. On Billings, local Trump supporters gathered in two Stop the Steal rallies. He does Mitch Leggy attended both and brings us the details. On Wednesday, a group of people in Billings gathered at two Stop the Steal rallies, encouraging Montana's congressional delegation to vote against certifying the 2020 presidential election results. The rallies were organized by Peggy Miller, a Laurel woman who's been at the head of other pro-Donald Trump rallies in the Billings area since April of last year. She's also organized a few events dubbed Freedom Drives, which comprise a parade of patriotically decorated cars that snaked through Billings and Laurel several times last year. I've always been engaged and involved for over 30 years, and so this year has even been more of a magnitude with everything that's going on and just uh, wanting to save America, wanting to have fair, integrity elections. I want the country, I think all of us should want to know that our elections are good and fair. At 10 a.m., rally goers met outside U.S. Senator Steve Dane's office in downtown Billings, waving flags and receiving honks from passing cars. Miller offered a message to Montana's Republican leadership in Congress. And we are encouraging our Congressman Matt Rosendale, our Senator Steve Daines, to continue to take their stand that they've sworn to, to the Montana right now, that they will oppose the Electoral College vote when it is presented to them. At noon, the group moved on to the Billings West End and stood on the sidewalk on King Avenue West. The line of rally goers stretched for about a block on King Avenue West, from its intersection at 24th Street West to the Walmart entrance on King Avenue. In the half hour I spent there, there were few moments of quiet, with many passing cars honking their horns in support. Dale Blum of Laurel was holding an American flag in the front line of rally goers. I'm just really glad to see this many patriots out there and to hear so much uh, honking and stuff from the people here in, in Billings and stuff like that. I think it shows that, that they're concerned too. Blum said he does trust Montana's election results, but not the results in states like Michigan and Wisconsin, which the Trump campaign sued over and lost, with judges seeing no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Well, I think they're being stolen. You know, I, uh, I've been watching that pretty close and stuff, and these I've, I've not uh, had any faith in these voting machines for years and years and years because uh, you, can, you can hack them, you can change things and stuff like that. So, no, it's to me, we're, we're doing the right thing here with, with uh, written ballots and stuff like that. It's still, you can still steal, but it makes it harder. While some protests in Washington, D.C. became violent, the rallies in Billings were both peaceful during the time Q2 was on scene. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Thanks, Mitch. Meanwhile, Democrats will control both the House and Senate when Joe Biden takes the Oval Office. That after a stunning sweep in Georgia's runoff election for its two Senate seats, CBS News now projects that Democrat John Ossoff has upset Republican David Perdue with 50.3% of the vote compared to Perdue's 49.7. Raphael Warnock has also won his race against Kelly Leffler to become Georgia's first black senator. That's for the remaining two years of Johnny Isaacson's term. The Senate is now split 50-50, but Vice President Kamala Harris will have the tie-breaking vote. All right, turning to Chief Forecaster, Ed McIntosh, rain and snow possible from some area for some areas uh, tomorrow at 
Who are the haves and have nots? You know, it's going to be mostly in the eastern plains, Russ, especially as we take a look. Now, here's where the showers will start to move in through early tomorrow morning. And notice a lot of it right from Billings towards the west stays a little bit drier. The winds coming off the mountains could actually hold back some of the showers from Billings towards Livingston, Red Lodge. Not that you won't pick up something, but really we're going to focus on this area from Mile City down towards Sheridan. Could cause some travel concerns, especially I-90 from, say, around Hardin towards Sheridan and then also 212 that's around Crow Agency over towards Broadus. So areas of rain and snow start to move into the picture with that heavier snow in southeastern Montana pockets perhaps up to five inches. We'll talk about more of that and the rest of the weather forecast coming up. All right, thank you Ed. Tonight new details on how Montana will roll out COVID-19 vaccines for those with a high risk medical condition. Now this following Governor Greg Gianforte's plan that he outlined yesterday. This includes everyone 16 to 69 with underlying health issues. Those with the Department of Public Health and Human Services say this includes those with cancer, Down syndrome, sickle cell disease, severe obesity and diabetes. Those 70 years and older will also start receiving the vaccine. Well, state health authorities report six more COVID-19 related deaths since yesterday. Two more in Yellowstone County and one each in Custer, Park, Gallatin and Missoula counties. 1,042 Montanans have now died. 78,000 plus have recovered. Billings Clinic now offers COVID-19 testing results within 24 to 48 hours. The in-house tag path system, which is a molecular test, has received emergency use authorization from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Thanks to that new test and system, analysis can now happen on site, significantly reducing the need to send tests to the state or other outside laboratories. The Lynx Clinic tells us the platform provides results that are much more accurate than antigen testing methods. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, the warmer weather may be welcome for many, but it hasn't exactly been positive for Montana's wheat. We'll explain coming up next. And a little later in sports, we're celebrating our Athletes of the Week. We will have you cheering for more.